Welcome once again to Inside LAFC, the Max and Vince podcast, joining you from glorious the hills in Alhambra. The airspace is clear. We have a wonderful show for you. There's Vince LaRosa. My name is Max Bretos. And before we get into this week's conversation, a reminder, our special guests, you do not want to miss this. We've already recorded it, and he was fantastic. Mark Dos Santos, we want to thank everyone who watched and listened the interview with Marco Garces. It, it, people are... Based on the numbers there, people are watching it. So we're we're certainly looking into some more interesting conversations within not just players, but everyone within LAFC. Yeah, I think everyone wants to learn a little bit more about the You club. will get smarter. It, it resonated. Yeah, you'll get smarter. You don't have to listen to us talk the whole time. We throw it to Nobody those guys that. and they'll tell you about, you know, with Marco, we talked about developing players, player acquisition, you know, identifying players. With Mark, we talk a little bit about what the role of an assistant coach is on a staff. Uh, I think those are those are vital. And look, I love having players on. But you and I, we talk about this, Max. Players are great guys. And for every player that's watching this, there's no players watching this. But if there is a player watching this. You're wrong. You I enjoy are having wrong you about on. that. I enjoy having you on. But a lot of them, they don't know what they can and can't talk about. So they keep it a little close to the vest. Whereas when we get the professionals like Marco, we get Mark Dos Santos on. They already know going in what they can and can't talk about. And they're willing to give as much as they can. So that's why those conversations are a little bit better. If you're an LAFC fan, you'll really enjoy it. Because Mark was there from the beginning. He left. He came back, so he has that unique perspective. If you're a fan of Canadian uh, soccer, you'll also enjoy this, and we welcome everyone to tune in on both sides of, of every border. So we even broke down the Champions League final. We broke down the Champions League final, and we know everyone's going to watch that on Sunday. Now, we are recording this on a Tuesday, so we'll have a little Galaxy conversation. Uh, we'll also look ahead to San Jose and then the two-and-a-half-week break, which is significant because we've talked to everyone here, and they've eyeballed it yep. as a place and a time to, in other words, get the band back together and get ready for the very busy summer schedule. And hope, hopefully there's health, hopefully there's form, and we will see something pretty special on the other end. That plan, that's the plan. I think that's a perfect segue into Columbus. Yeah. Because as we that saw... That was the we, part of this. Yeah, we saw a team that understood what their limitations were in that moment. Then you have delays, you have all the other things. And they set out with a plan to maximize what they had in the tank, knowing that there's injuries, there's fitness issues, there's just sheer exhaustion, and that two-week break is on the horizon. And it was re we've talked about it on LAFC 360 on Monday. It was refreshing. Check out LAFC 360 on 110 yes. Football YouTube. We, Great show. We actually have a lot of Galaxy talk in that as well, if you need more Galaxy talk. But we talked about Steve post-game, and it was just a quick post-game because they had to run and catch a plane after all the delays. It was basically just him talking. They were on the clock to make the plane. The yeah. game, they had a, uh, a curfew when... Flying out that night was off the table, and that would have just disaster. been awful. Would have been a disaster. But he was so refreshing in the just saying, like, we had a plan. We went out there to do this plan, which is slightly different than what we normally do, and it worked. And you don't hear that from a lot of coaches because they, they want to be, you know, they don't want to have that veil of secrecy, that little bit of mystery, right? So no one can ever point to them and go, you did exactly this and this, and that was wrong. But it, it was refreshing. Again, maybe if they don't win that game, he doesn't talk that way. But... I thought that was very cool, and you did as well. And just what we watched with it, and it's something we've never seen from LAFC ever, was allowing the team to get the yeoman share of the ball. I think that's the first time I've ever used the word yeoman. Mm -hmm. um, play their fullbacks when they come and see if you could find a counterattack. You know, yeah. play a lower block. Not a low block, a lower block. At least for the first 45 minutes, they got what they wanted where they didn't concede a goal, and then you bring in mm -hmm. the heavy hitters, Vela, Brian Rodriguez, Jose Cifuentes, it did work. And the fact that it worked under this circumstance where hopefully they don't have one like it where the, so much congestion and you got to get ready for a game Wednesday and Saturday mm -hmm. and you had a game the previous Wednesday. But there will be a moment, and because it went so well with this squad, right. that you seem like it would be crazy not to, to use it again. Yeah, I mean, and you make a great point. It's a specific moment in the season. It's It's not just the opponent. It's... How tired you it's more are. More the moment you than have the available. opponent. Yeah, it's probably. more the moment than the opponent. Steve said, I want to give my team the best chance to win in the, the current state that they're in right now. Yes, if LAFC, everyone's healthy. He probably he said it on the coaches show that I just filmed with him. That'll come out later. Tactics versus playing style. He said, if, if I go into the room and I say, boys, let's play, this is how they're going to play. That's how LAFC plays. But when I look at a game and see there might be a tactical wrinkle that I can do something in, that's when I actually give them a couple of instructions. Say, hey, normally we do this. Why don't we just try this? And like you said, it went so well that why wouldn't you say there's going to be there's absolutely going to be other moments in the season where you're gassed, 
where you're maybe, hopefully there's not another injury bug type thing, but there's going to be moments where you're missing guys or guys just aren't on the right form, and you're going to have to find that little bit extra advantage. I don't think, I think fans applaud that more so than ever because the, the tactical game has become bigger for a lot of people. I think that's we. It's interesting. Yeah, it's interesting. I think a lot more people kind of understand it and get it. Um, and I think for the people that don't get it, the more coaches like Steve are willing to actually talk about it, the more oh, people will understand. It's, it's a gold mine. Did ask him about Carlos Vela and a very interesting answer because he focused on the goal. Mm -hmm. And he said, look at how he took that ball on a beeline with pace. The defender tried to knock him off and he didn't budge and he finished. That was, you know, that's a Carlos Vela we haven't seen this season and a sign that those physical attributes are coming back into view. After, you know, it, playing a lot. The, yeah. We can't question it because he played crazy minutes and he played every game. Uh, but being able to do that, even more so in a congested schedule where he had the pop off the bench was huge. Yeah, to have that, to have that in him. Uh, yeah, Steve told us both. He was like, man, it was so good to see. And it was the same, same. We were like, it reminded us a little bit of the, his second goal for the hat trick against Colorado to start of the season. Or you can go farther back. It reminds you a little bit of the way he played in that run in uh, to the CONCACAF Champions League where he was just unplayable. Like if you left it, the littlest mistake that a defender made, he could pounce on it. And Carlos has that in his locker, that, that bit of speed. But to your point, he's getting older, played a lot of games. Um, they needed has, it. They needed it because he was, up. they he didn't have numbers. Yeah. He needed that 45 minutes off to start the game in order to bring it after that. But I think he's feeling good to the point where he's going to feel good for this. Obviously, he gets up for Galaxy games. He's the king of this, this rivalry. But like you said, after the two weeks, Carlos already starting to feel good, even with the congestion season, and then he gets a little two-week break. This is looking really good for uh, the state of the club at the very least. The Columbus win, I don't think you can really <laughs> emphasize how huge that was with the back-to-back de -back defeats. You mm -hmm. could only imagine. This is, that's not an easy place to play. You're dealing with four hours of weather, almost four hours of weather delay. You're dealing with, I imagine, looking up at the clock going, okay, you have to get this game kicked off by 9 o'clock at the latest, and you've been there since about 3 o'clock local time. You know your flight is. You know Sunday you're gonna have a. You could probably have a chance, a chance to decompress. That goes out the window if you don't get out of here on time. Uh, to walk away with that two zip goal, and you saw it on the, uh, on this the, sh the photo that they had coming on the airplane. You could see it etched on their faces, a togetherness uh, and a result, which is their fourth road win of the season. Which you get four road wins a season. Period. You are in pretty good shape. Yeah, you're in great shape. And it was a twofold for the mentality. As you said, don't want to keep losing games. So you want to get back on track and you want to get some points. But then with all that adversity to actually pull that off, you now know kind of the way you can we weather the storm. I didn't mean to do that on purpose. Yeah. But you know you know the way you can weather things. And then I think real, really, and the big thing everyone wants to talk about because they want us to talk about the Galaxy game, it gives you that little cushion where you say, everything is in this Galaxy game. Because like Steve said, we built up that goodwill where it's like, Yes, we want to win against San Jose the following day, but we can look at just this Galaxy game and not worry about the league. We can put that completely out of our head and say, this one-off, everything goes into this. Because the weekend, we put ourselves in a position where we don't need to be precious about every single point. By the way, weather delays, I don't mind as much as other delays, like flight delays. Uh, I was going to say, how many different delays? Well, what are they, like uh, road delays? You know what really, you know, really grinds my gears? Delay a game. Delay of game, Horrible yes. penalty call. Don't let that happen. Delay a game. Uh, the, the Especially out of a timeout, yeah. you know, and then you get another one. You can hand, never have that out That's of a That's going to drive coaches crazy. <laughs> Let's talk about the uh, the Galaxy, and uh, you probably will be aware of this news, but Steve uh, mentioned it in the media gathering. Ryan Holling said, and Latif Blessing back in the squad available. I don't know what that means for the Galaxy, but it's great news when you have to get guys in for mm -hmm. Saturday at San Jose. I, I came in here and I was looking for the body language because you know that this is a massive, everybody knows the historical significance of playing at Dignity Health Sports Park, playing that game here for LAFC. They've never gotten a result there. The new players know it. Mm -hmm. So you come here and you look at the body language and, and, and everyone's, and maybe it's the Columbus effect too by getting that victory, but the spirits are good. Uh, it's relaxed, which is what you want because you don't want them to go into a game like that where they're just too tight. And we don't, you might know the result after I said this. You're right. But I was very, uh, I was pleased to see that, the, the, at least the body language of these guys going into that, because I can only imagine how hard, because I saw how hard they took the loss the first season, which had controversy attached to it. 
especially the new players. I mean, Ilya and Maxime Crepeau, you know, just mm-hmm. devastated. They know this is important for the fans. Uh, they know it's important for the club, and th- they know the uh, responsibility. And uh, I'm I'm pretty confident they'll be able to challenge uh, answer that. I was smiling, thinking of somebody listening to this after the Galaxy thing, and we're doing all this breakdown. Like we think this is gonna happen, this and this, and it's like famous last words. Yeah. But just because we're all, I think we all have a little bit of PTSD from some of these matchups, especially yeah. Galaxy not doing so well, us and, feeling pretty good. And then they get all, well at yeah. LAFC's expense. They get well literally in that game as the whistle kicks off. But I, I agree with you. I think they, they feel loose because, again, it's something that we referred to on that LAFC 360 show. It's a second chance. Second chance that you don't normally get in this league, right? They wanted so badly to be the first team to win at Dignity Health Sports Park. And all things considered, they should have got out of there with a draw. But they have to sit back and go, guys, we just didn't get the job done. We lost. We left it in the hands of the referee. And, oh, my God, we have another chance. And not just another chance, but in a game that matters. Because you don't want to go there for the playoffs because that means that they finished higher than you, and we never want that to happen regardless. But to win a knockout game, to say we've now played two games of consequence against you and we've won both. Sure, you guys can claim that you've won more games in the, in the season series, but the ones that matter, we've won both. And now we've done it once at our home and once at your home. I think they're relishing that fact. Interesting uh, broadcast. Uh, it'll be. I'll be calling the game with LA Galaxy voice Joe Totino, so you can catch that on ESPN Plus if you can't get out down there in Carson to see the game. So uh, it should be interesting. I'm, I'm excited about that as well. The Galaxy coming to this game. That uh, was was watching the the defeat to the Dynamo. What if was, you switched off when like he talks when the Galaxy have the ball and you talk when LA? Would can't. that be revolutionary? It will be revolutionary, but uh, untenable. Impossible to achieve. It would so. be impossible. Maybe we can try a little bit. It's an experimental ground. We're excited about trying something new. Uh, <laughs> bad. It was a bad day for the Galaxy, which makes me even more nervous. because. <laughs> and they, was, they rotated some people as well. Yeah, they put a bunch of guys on. Chicharito came off the bench. Uh, Douglas Costa was off the bench. Um, Derek Williams, who was you know, yeah. one of the, arguably their best defender, also came off. Did late. Cabral come off the bench? Cabral came off the bench. Um, they, they played two games in the U.S. Open Cup, and they didn't play their featured guys. They, they're going to definitely play their featured guys here. Uh, Jovalich was he scored a couple goals. They were they struggled against the, those Cal Strikers down in Irvine. Do you think that's an advantage? I think it could be. I because right, they, they haven't well, felt they the haven't. pressure of a knockout game as a as a squad as their right. top squad. And their their featured guys are going to be fresh, and those guys are just licking their chops at the prospects of bringing LAC down a rung. Mm-hmm. Whether they do it or not remains to be seen. But they didn't play these first two U.S. Open Cup games where the LAFC players by and large did. Right. Um, it is a situation here where the where the Galaxy players, they don't have form on their side, but they'll have freshness and they'll, they'll have a sharpness. I don't, I don't no doubt about that at all. You know what's weird is I feel like even when they've beat us, they've played not to lose. And that's actually helped because they made the game scrappy. And LAFC doesn't like games that are scrappy with a lot of fouls and really physical. Like when you play not to lose, you, you foul guys, you get into 50 50s, there's a lot of second balls. But this is a one off where like, you, it goes to penalties. Like, I don't think they want to go to penalties. I, I just wonder, I'm just curious how they come out. Do they come out a little bit on the front foot? Do they come out the way they did against us, the, the regular season game where they kind of sat back a little bit um, and then let us play with the ball first and then. We're able to be a little opportun- opportunistic. Obviously, anytime you have Chicharito on the pitch, you can be opportunistic, right? Because that's the way. That's just the way he plays off the back shoulder, and he finishes. You give him two chances, he's going to finish one. Yeah. Uh, but I, yeah, I'm just curious. I'm curious what their mentality is. You know what LAFC's mentality is going to this game. Uh, I, I, I was actually thinking more on the flip side when I said that. Do you think that's an advantage? I think it's an advantage for LAFC's first team, having felt the weight of a one-off. And against a rival in Portland, yes, it wasn't a full squad Portland, but it's still a rival and it's still something you got to get done and you had to work through it. These guys might come in a little flat because one-off games are just so different than regular season games. You can't just say like, ah, that half didn't go well, well, you know, we'll try to get something out of the second half and we'll see what happens. No, you, it's all or nothing. And I don't think you can just turn that on. I, the, the, so there's things that worry me about the Galaxy. I don't want to put this out into the space, but Chicharito hasn't scored in a while, but I've watched their games and he's working. Yeah. He's getting after it. Douglas Costa's still figuring things out. You see the talent. So those are two really excellent offensive players that are capable of having a moment, which could put the would put LAFC in a hole, which uh, I think it's like six games or five games where they haven't scored in the first half. This would be a good time to, to get that first half goal. It'll come down to this. And we already talked about Chicharito. You give him two opportunities, he's going to score one. So you know if you 
make mistakes and you give him opportunities, he's going to score. So on the other end, the Galaxy's weakness is they do let a lot of opportunities in, big opportunities, a lot of times, a lot of touches in their own box. But LAFC, for whatever reason, when they go there, hasn't been clinical. If LAFC can be clinical, then they have the best chance to win this game. And I know a long way of saying finish your chances and you'll win the game. But that just seems to be how every single one of these games has gone. LAFC has 20 you know, 25 shots uh, it's 25 shots total. They have a lot of chances, but they're all kind of half chances and they're not finishing. Galaxy, two chances, both on net, both in the goal. So you got to know that whatever chance you get, you got to finish them and make them pay to put that extra bit of pressure on them. That's how this game is going to tilt one way or the other. It's, uh, it's the first away game in Open Cup, so it's a unique challenge. LAFC have the benefit where after traveling to Columbus, they don't have to get on a plane for the entire week. They don't have to get on a plane for a long time unless they go on some sort of trip after during this break. Which I talked I have, to uh, I, have no I talked to Elia. He said he's just going to hang out here. So nice. I told him to give me a call. I was like, "You come down to Long Beach, hang out." Yeah. So maybe I'll hang out with him. Someone else is going to have a shindig. We'll get the players over. Let's do it. Let's let's do some grilling. Let's do it. Some non-alcoholic beers. Yeah, I actually have a trip toward the back half. Yes, toward the back half. That's when we're already back in play. But okay, so never mind. Weeks, what are you doing? That's a good question. What are you doing for Memorial Day? You said you like Memorial Day. Is I got it, some. I got a couple. Holiday. I got some work. Unfortunately, oh, well, no. uh, I had to tra travel to Combate, the MMA. They have a card on Sunday. It's a tent pole, as they say, which is a big one. So, oh. and then uh, we've got one ten football on Monday. No, we don't. Whoa! Are you doing a? No, the Angels wear boots. We'll be there. We don't. There's no game to talk about. Wait, is it? Isn't it talking about San Jose? We're gonna talk about San Jose. You do what you got to do, man. I might not be there. <laughs> I'm just going to tell you right now. If you don't be there and I show up and I or, drive up to Burbank. Or, or if I am there. You're going you're to mail it in. Who knows in what kind of uh, state I'll be in. Oh, see, that's worth tuning in for yeah. alone. Mate, can, can we get like a little grill for me on the side so I could have some burgers going? I want, the that's the thing. You want something off the grill on a Day weekend. It's a great look. I look. I've lived everywhere. I lived in Miami. I grew up in Miami. I lived in the Northeast, where in the summers they it's it's holy can ground. Can it be a Zoom? No. Sorry, I'm still thinking of ways I can. And I love one ten no football, one, but I like Memorial Day. No city does Memorial Day, Fourth of July, summer yeah, man, better than be LA. My, I want to be on Orange my bicycle County. riding around Long Beach. Maybe hop on a paddleboard. Can I do it from a paddleboard? Yes, you can do it from a paddleboard. We're talking about revolutionary you and Joe Tatino <laughs> trying to call a game together. Why, well, how about revolutionary Vince LFC 360 from a paddleboard? Okay, something that's something you would definitely want to see. So let's quickly look at San Jose. Wait, wait, can we talk about this? I don't know if they can see it. If you're watching the podcast, there's a staff game going on here. It seems like they're really getting at it. Marco Garza is out there. Oka, who else we got out there? Oka is a field player. Uh, nope. We got Jeff Huber. Jeff Huber. Administrator extraordinaire. Christian's out there. We got some staff people out there. No Steve Trondolo or Ante Razov. They were they were carrying speaking of the injury bug, they were carrying injuries. <laughs> Can't even get out there for a little staff game. When when Ante doesn't play, I get to play. When I'm in when he's here, he won't allow me to play. That's something I have to well, take up. We'll on. have to tell that story another time. That is a fun, fun story. Saturday, three o'clock kick, Bank of California Stadium. Go to LAC.com if you wanna check it out. Good afternoon tilt. We'll have some evening games coming back again. San Jose playing well. Seems like the weather will be nice for that. Yes, it'll be a nice one. Well, it's been great. A little sea layer rolling in here throughout Los Angeles, throughout the Southland. This is obviously, depending on what, how Wednesday goes, everyone wants to uh, You might be play, playing with house money in this game or yes. else it's like we absolutely have to win this game because we don't want to go out on a bad note for two weeks. Right, and again, and look, the Columbus game, again, looms large because it put them back at the top of all MLS with 26 points, with eight wins. No one has those points. No one has those wins. Uh, we could say that it's going to go well, and they're getting healthier, and signs are pointing there. San Jose has their own Open wins. Cup. Yep, they do. With. Not against they, the, Sacramento. Sacramento, not against MLS competition, but their own Open Cup to deal Keep with. Keep your eye on that one. The winner of LAFC Galaxy gets the winner of that in the quarterfinals. So, Yeah, if you're San Jose, because they're playing Sacramento, which I guess is a little rivalry because they're somewhat close. Not really. Uh, but you're watching this LAFC game, and you're like, you're probably hoping that LAFC wins, right? Because you know if it doesn't go well, and especially if it goes as poorly as it did, we have crazy referee decisions and all that, you're like, man, if LAFC comes in here angry, knowing that they have two weeks off, it's going to be a long day for us yeah. at Bank California Stadium. Just something with uh, a reminder about the Open Cup. No VAR, uh, extra time, and then penalty kicks, as you touched on, for that. Which they practiced today. Yes. We I won't like tell it. you how they practiced them, but they did. Yeah. Everyone was in good spirits for that as well.
So it's without getting too much into the earthquakes, that puts it on the bow of the real first stretch of the season. You're gonna miss Matias Almeida. I do miss it. Miss About the purple bit. sweater. I look. I'm a big fan when Gabriel Heinze and Matias Almeida, players that I worshipped, are coaching in MLS. I love it. Mm -hmm. But neither one went very well. No. Matias Almeida went a lot better than Heinze. Uh, yes. So I like to see those guys there, and I like to see the foreign coaches because it means that they're. But it's good that they're not succeeding because it shows it's, you don't just click your fingers and you're a legend and you get this. But this uh, is true. San Jose's not. They've. They, I think a lot of players are expressing themselves more. Cade Cowell certainly at the top of that list. Jackson Yule's been really good again. This is a team that they don't have the depth, but they uh, they're going to be dangerous. And they got the upper hand on LAFC the last couple, the last season certainly. Uh, two seasons when they won at the end of the year. Yeah, San Jose was the pitfall of having a system that you absolutely couldn't deviate from. And so he, in that case, he was trying to put players into positions that weren't their favorite. Now they're in spots that they like. They're playing well, as you say. Yeah, Kate Cowell's back playing on the wing, being goal dangerous instead of, you know, playing Abobasi, a wing back. who we thought could. Uh, yeah, Abobasi, who's come up and I think is. Didn't get called up. Didn't get called up, but I'm, I'm sure they're still looking at him. Yeah. So. He could be in that picture for the number nine for the U.S. national team. The San Jose team is dangerous. What we're saying is He's a good they're dangerous. Despite being down a little bit, they can be dangerous, and they look better than they have been. So that game on Sunday is still one to look out for. So we, we cross our fingers, hope that uh, LAFC somehow are in the quarterfinals of the Open Cup. 29 points at top Major League Soccer. Feet up. Cooking up some skirt steak on the grill with a nice marinade. And having Vince, a nice cold beverage. And Vince gone missing for Vince LAFC on a 360 board. on Monday. That's how I want. That's how if I want it to all roll If we win Open Cup and we beat San Jose, I think I should get a day off. Yep. I'm I'm lobbying for that. For those who are going out there, be safe. Uh, this rivalry is fantastic, but you know it does bring out some some un, uh, some unattractive elements that we don't want. That we hope to eliminate part of it, where it's a good, healthy rivalry. It's a great rivalry. It's growing. This is going to be part of its uh, its mythology. The first Open Cup game, and it's going to be thrilling for folks to be there to be part of it. Um, but let's just, you know, let's let's make sure it's another memorable moment for that. Yeah. Well put. Was that all right? That's, yeah, no, it's a good way to end it. Everyone does it. I mean, we just I, just for the safety, because we know we say it all the time, but yeah. we we actually do really mean it. Uh, we we think uh, it's be a part of history on the right side of history. Yeah. So we'll see you out there. Have a great week, and we'll be back with Mark Dos Santos. I was going to say goodbye. No, yeah, Mark Dos Santos. <laughs> Mark Dos Santos coming up. An interview you are truly going to enjoy. This is Inside LFC, the Max and Vince podcast. Welcome back to Inside LFC, the Max and Vince podcast. And we're thrilled to join by really generally one of the great guys in this league. Uh, it's, it, and I don't know if I said this properly when you came back. Mark Dos Santos here, assistant coach here for Steve Trundlo. Uh, how much you were missed and what a great energy you, you, you offered here. And it's great to see you back here in the conversations we have. We don't take it for granted. I'm, uh, I already said it in the beginning. When I knew about the possibility, I didn't even hesitate. You know, it's a place where I missed a lot. So I'm happy to be here again. What, uh, the difference is from when you, you left and you came back to see how this club has grown. Yeah, of course, I enjoyed a lot, you yep. know, working with Bob and learning from Bob. But Bob has a different way of, of leadership. Steve has another way of leadership. They all bring their their strengths on, on the table and you just have to, as an assistant coach, to adapt to to, to what the coach asks from you. But uh, yeah, the, the energy is, is different, but like the, the, the power, the culture is the same. When a club has strong foundations uh, and know exactly what they want, it's... Um, Regardless who comes, this club's always going to have some success. Yeah, you were away for a little bit, but when you came back, obviously it was kind of seamless. You felt good. You knew a lot of the same people, but it had to be where you – did you have to take a look – like take a step back for a second and go, wow, I can't believe how, how this club has moved along since I've been gone and it, how you've changed probably. Yeah, I learned a lot. You know, I, I went to Vancouver as a, a coach, and now what I learned in Vancouver from – what to do and what not to do made me. There's conversations that sometimes we have in the, during the staff with the staff, and I say, guys, let's not l go there. I, I know the end of that road. You know, I've been there, so uh, I'm not the same coach that I was in 2018. That's for sure. But some things didn't change. You know, there's a very cool story that uh, when when I arrived in the building, uh, 
I still had my my fingerprint. Uh, they don't allow me to do they, a fingerprint for the record. They didn't change it. And Jay at the front door, he said, ah, I knew you were coming back. Ah. You know, it was so, so I felt again at home right away. I said it a lot of times, so it was easy. Max isn't lying. They will not let him put his fingerprint in there because they're afraid what he might do after hours. Well, it, that says a lot because, you know, I've worked at places and once you leave, they're like, we're escorting you out. And it's like, I, I just worked here for a while. I go, I know we're parting ways, but, but that's, uh, I mean, that says a lot about the club and about how, how, how what they they preach about being a place where it's a family and that, but it. it but it, I, I realize, and I spoke that to friends that the the most special thing in in sports of all of my experiences is not even more than championships was to to leave a place and being able that the people that run the club wanted you to come back. Also, I think that says. It's the most special thing that you could feel, you know, a lot of times it's, oh, no, that guy, no, no, uh, he was here three years ago, we don't want him, you know, so. Uh, There's a lot about you too, Mark. Uh, well, yeah. about the club also, yeah. you know, that there, no ego, no, no grudges around anything, humble club, big club, um, and, you know, fans out of this world, yeah. you know, so all of it together makes it a good place to be. So I think a lot of people don't quite understand exactly what a head coach does. So therefore, they don't really know what an assistant coach does. Mm -hmm. I know from staff to staff, it's going to be different. I'm yeah. sure if you were an assistant under a different coach, it might be different. But I do know one thing that's kind of always stayed the same in LAFC is that collaborative effort between you. So how does it? How do you play off of each other? Like when you're talking with Ante and then you're talking with yeah. Steve, how does that work? It's uh, you need the stars to get a line. Look, I've traveled a lot. I was in a lot of clubs, different countries, and I saw a lot of staffs that sometimes one element that it doesn't think the same way, and then it starts to create a, a bad atmosphere. Here, the staff, the stars got aligned. You know, uh, I knew Ante already. Me and Ante always kept in contact. Uh, we share a lot of the same ideas. And my first conversation with Steve, um, I was in Vancouver in my office, and I remember it, it flowed so well, and um, everything was easy. And from there, now when we're together, we're able to be hard on each other, we're able to give our opinions, we're able, but every time we get out of a room, we're, we're connected, we know where we want to go, and we like to be around each other. That's very, very important. Mm -hmm. You know, we like to be uh, together, have meals together, so I, it's it's a team, and I think that energy could show, uh, and the players could feel it. The collaborative approach it has to be satisfying too, because it's one thing where the coach, and I don't know how it is everywhere, where the coach says, "This is my decision." I get the impression, and correct me if I'm wrong, is they vet it through. What does Mark think? What does Oka think? What does Marco Garces think? What does mm -hmm. John Thornton, Steve? Mm -hmm. It feels like that process is very alive here where it, whether they take your advice or not they they'll, they'll listen to it across the board the environment is very much like yeah. that so like i said uh a, you know some people say there's no ego but they don't live it here they live it like everybody i interact here there's no ego at all nobody has a this trip of oh i'm a leader or my position is here so i want to show I'm nobody the gaffer. I'm here. Yeah. Nobody does. No, from the president down, nobody does it. We already know who's the president. We know who's the leader. So it, we don't need to go through that. And I think that that says a lot again. Of course that uh, uh, Steve is the leader of the process. Me, Ante, Oka, we have our responsibilities. Uh, but the thing is, it's so clear, our responsibilities, that we arrive here between 7, 7.30 in the morning and we get to our work right away because we know exactly what's expected from us. We're not like arriving in the building, oh, I'm waiting for the coach to tell me what to do. No, we know what we have to do. And that's great uh, for staff. You said that when you spoke with Steve the first time, it just, it clicked right away. I want to ask you, because so many things, when I've talked with you, it's about collaborative, the project, the idea, what we're all going for. What was it about Steve's project that really- It, it was right away like that in the, the conversation with me. He was very clear with the role he wanted me to take. It was like black on white, I would like you to pay attention to this, this, this. So for me it was, I knew I was coming to a place where I would 
work and not only put cones on, on the ground, you know, on the grass, like some assistants do in the world. Um, and it was so clear that, that we clicked. And I, I said that before, it was like, if we work together in another world or if he was my brother in another world, uh, our relationship was great from the start. I already had a great relationship with Ante. Uh, Oak, I, I got to meet here, great guy, and, and that's it. Well, players, any, any guys where you were like, I remember that guy, like, I'm, I'm sure there was nothing you had problems with, but a, you were a like, special were you nervous? Situ a special situation is when I was coaching Vancouver, for some reason, me and Nelie had always a lot of respect for, for each other. After games, he would come speak with me, or I would speak with him, never thinking that. And um, Ilya, when he saw me, because it wasn't announced right away, right? He didn't know. So then he, he hugged me like, hey, you're here. Like we had a, but we only had a, a, a co opponent coach and player <laughs> relationship. But there, you know, it clicked from, from games. Uh, I always respected a lot this club, even coaching against this club. So I never, even if, if some moments, maybe situation in games against LAFC pissed me off, but I didn't go to a player or go to Bob due to so much respect for the club. Mm -hmm. So I remember being uh, always after games close to say hi to, to, you know, go see Chiki, Sifu, Murillo and already um, so it was really easy, the interaction here. Mark, you're really good at this, man. You, these answers are, are they're I'm, very... I've done, I've done a few. You've done a few? No, but I mean, <laughs> we, a lot of people do a few. I just want to uh, give you props for that. I just want to talk about, because the, the Spanish speakers on this team, and some guys are learning their English, and I hear you speaking Spanish to whoever is it was in mm -hmm. earshot and how important yeah. that is to communicate. And Maxime Crepeau as well. Yeah. Um, because when you look at this staff, it is a cosmopolitan team. Yeah. And the coaching staff has, has maintains uh, an approach there where they, where they can communicate and get the message across. We, between uh, Ante, Oka, me, Steve. You've seen the world. Yeah, how you many know, languages, so many are languages we're you know? I don't six speak. Six or seven. But German, Croatian, Spanish, Portuguese, French, English, all covered, right? And um, so if Luka Modric came here, we're good. We'd have it. No We'd problem. <laughs> no I don't problem. think you even need to speak to him. No, no, right. no. You just let him go. Yeah. I know. I know the way Mark looks at some players, yeah, and I think like, that's a player. He, he was like, "Well, you let him uh, play." He's okay. But, but uh, it, communication today is crucial. Mm -hmm. And if you get, if we pay attention to the culture of today, our kids are getting brought up. We have a lot of discussions in education, and uh, our kids have a lot of the things easy today. So. A lot of things have to be more explained. Mm -hmm. A player understanding the reason why. And we have conversations sometimes between the staff that, oh, we have to talk with this player or this player. But 25 years ago, 20 years ago, you didn't have to justify nothing to a player. It was not, you're not playing because you're not playing. It was not even a conversation. Mm -hmm. A player was afraid to go knock at the door, the, uh, the coach, and ask a question. And culture changed. Yeah. So, of course, that you have to have an ability to communicate clearly. Uh, when, when I want to be very clear with Max on something, I always do it in French. Because Max, it's, it's his comfort, even if he's great in English, and, but it's the, the, comfort, the, the comfort language. The same with Fall. We sp me and Fall, we only speak in, in, in French mm. to each other. But then, you know, the Latinos in Spanish and to the group always in English, right? And sometimes say, did you guys all understand? They all say yes, but we know that not all understood. Right, you got to go individual <laughs> yeah, a little one by one. Bit, yes. A little extra work, but it's it's worth it. Yeah. And uh, I wish you were in our my son's school. I think that would really help him. <laughs> it's a big picture <laughs> thing to have that focus, that communication across the board. Well, let's spread it out. We, he's been yes, so gracious yes. with us. Uh, a good 10 minutes on LAFC. So let's let's go global. Obviously, there's a big match coming up this weekend. It's the Champions League final. It's Real Madrid. It's Liverpool. It's two coaches that you have admiration for and that you've been around. You've gotten to see how they work. Max and I, we are but humble watchers of football. Yes. You actually work in this. So tell us a little bit. Break down the game for us. How do you think it's going to go? this have been, been around watching. Uh, I watched Ancelotti at Chelsea. Never been around Klopp. Mm -hmm. So Klopp, I just know like you guys are reading about it. 
Um, I, I think if you, we only go through the football part, I feel that Liverpool has the rhythm, the, the rock and roll they talk about and the, the punch to win it, mm -hmm. I, I think. But on the other side, there's a, there's a Real Madrid, you know? What can we do? <laughs> this is our relationship. For those that are watching and are listening, <laughs> Steve Trondolo is on the other side of the camera. You can't make see it, him. Make, make it, make it faces. Now he's having and to clean a, the glass. I don't know what the players are doing. You probably heard that over there. It's, it's oh, like they a, have a competition going on. Okay, but it sounds like someone just won the World Cup trophy. Oh, my God. I can't tell you what's happening now. Can I? So let, let <laughs> this me, is for you, not for no, us. No, let me look at you now. So. Yeah. Th that part of football, I think Liverpool has more right now, but uh, Champions League in Real Madrid in Carlo Ancelotti, you can never put it aside. I think they they have a chance just because of that, for sure. Is it just his ability to to be cool under pressure? He never seems bothered. I had I had like uh, the chance to speak with Nesta when he was coaching in Miami, and I remember him saying that he would go through a brick of wall for Ancelotti. Uh, and everybody that speaks about Ancelotti, it's the human part. Mm. Yeah. It's the human part, just knowing. He turned to the bench uh, before overtime in the Real Madrid City game, and he asked Marcelo, so what do you think? What do you think we should do now? It tells you so much about the humility of a guy that yeah. won everything. But you can tell He's that when you see him on the sideline. He's won the five big Yeah, leagues, major trophies. You know? Yeah. you know how difficult yeah. it is to do that? So because of that part... My heart wants him to win. Mm -hmm. There's a, I think they could do it, but there's something about the football of Liverpool that right now I think it's, it's fantastic, and I think they will win it. I, I, it it's Real Madrid in the final. I would. I, my head. I agree. Yeah. I hate yeah. to be it's cliche. It's your my head and your heart. It's the two. My head says things. Liverpool yeah. too. My heart says Real Madrid because it's just an incredible story. Yeah. And then beating Man City, for me, really saved the tournament in many ways. I don't want to say save the tournament, but I seeing that I don't like the two Premier League teams or two La Liga teams, this makes it yeah. so much more exciting yes. because of that. Um, by the way, Carlo Ancelotti, for those who didn't see him playing, I know he's changed. He kind of looks exactly the same. He he does. Was, but he was a good player. He was an amazing man. player, but he, he looks the same. He had the, gray, yeah. he had the grayish hair. and He, well, uh, <laughs> he has a lot of, uh, of knowledge how to deal with big egos and big yeah. personalities and so many stories. I, when I was at Chelsea, I remember uh, listening. I, I asked people around, how is he in the day-to-day? -day? And they told me that the first day he arrived at Colburn, they made him visit all the facility. And Chelsea has like 12, 13 incredible grass pitch, all eated under the size of Stanford Bridge. Everything in the facility is perfect. Mm -hmm. And um, the food is incredible. And they asked Carlo, Carlo, uh, you, you think we need something? You need something else? He goes, oh, yes, I do. And they were like, uh, where's my espresso machine? Uh, <laughs> so That's it, top of your list, yes. too, I think. Yeah, 100%. But with, with that... How it, many espressos shows, a day? Me, five. Yeah, five. Easy. Oh, all right. Five easy. Match game, He's Red Bull. Five easy. He's got a lot of <laughs> no, work No, five do. easy, <laughs> Red Bull and match day and... Um, I never sleep after the game, and I think I, I know why. Well, no, 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 it's not. I when I'm in, and I'm not a coach. I'm not saying we're in the same lake, but I tell my wife when I come home and a game's like at eight and we're it's like midnight. She goes, "Go to bed." I go, "I can't." I'm yeah, I think ramped all, up. I think all yeah. of us that work the games, especially when they're at bank, you get yeah. home and you're you're charged up. Yeah, you can't. incredible, yes. incredible. I wanted to ask you about. I don't want to take too much more of your time, but because the Canadian connection and Maxime Crapo and Daniel Henry were anticipating they will be there in Qatar and uh, someone who's grown up and worked and lived in Canada. What, what does that mean for, for this Canadian effort to do it, to, to be able to be in that spotlight? You know, uh, playing Belgium. I mean, this is incredible. incredible. Croatia, right? Yeah. You know that uh, 10 years ago, nobody, everybody would say there's no chance, you know? I think MLS did a lot for a lot of these players that that's where they started to to grow. Mm -hmm. MLS had a big reason uh, behind the success of Canada. Yeah. But then John Erdman, what he did in recruiting, what he did convincing players that were a little bit in the defense, like Stefan Eustachio, um, the work of all the qualification, it's not, you know, some people could say, oh, it's the generation of Canadian players that are all together and Fonzie and Jonathan David. But John Erdman had a lot to do with that, I, I have no doubt. 
um, in my head to get the guys together. And it's going to be hard to repeat, you know, Qatar for sure. Ooh, Canada's in. Um, in Canada, U.S., Mexico World Cup for sure. They're, they're in. in. They're in. And that's good for the players. They know. <laughs> yeah, let's hope that this creates that new generation um, mm -hmm. because it's not a given. You know, you could go through a run like that and then disappear for another yeah. 20 years. It's just the reality of it. Yeah, speaking of not a given, we never got to talk about Italy versus Portugal. Cause no, we did. By the way, just as a, a, for me, and I think not everyone does it, but when the World Cup starts, I'm pulling for Canada. I'm pulling for Mexico. Hey, they got Belgium I'm pulling for Costa Rica. Game, I think a lot of people it. feel like they could, they could shock I'm them. And I, I, I'm one of them. I, I'm, like I, think, they they, I think Canada yeah, gets a result I, there. I don't know what to say. It's, <laughs> guys, it's big games. It's mm -hmm. big games. And, but Canada has nothing to lose. Mm -hmm. Canada has nothing to lose. They got in because they deserve. They finished first in the group. And now they have, a, they have to go and enjoy it. If they do that well, they always have a chance. But talking about Italy, we, uh, not long ago we were in a restaurant, in, an Italian restaurant. And um, the manager... He asks, uh, where are you guys from, you know? And Steve, oh, American in Germany, Oka, uh, Ante, and then Oka goes, Macedonia. You had to see his face changed. Ooh. The manager, oh, oh yeah. No, that's, from, uh, that's right. And then Ante, that? Ante goes right away, no, no, but uh, he lived a lot of years in Germany. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, that was cool. That's good for Macedonians. They could always have that. Yeah. Mark, you've been fantastic. And, uh, Thank you, guys. By the way, I know when Canada Pleasure. plays, you'll see a lot of guys that you coach, and I know that's going to be a very proud moment for you. Uh, hope we can do this again soon. Whenever very you guys busy, want. Very busy week Thank here you. for Mark Dos Santos. That'll put a bow on uh, this week's episode of Inside LAFC, the Max and Vince podcast. Subscribe, rate, review, download, tell a friend. Uh, have a great week. We'll see you soon. <laughs>